Today's topic is proxies. So I'm going to talk about three services. The first is Scrapper API. The second is one open source Scrappy proxy pool. And third is Crawlera. And Crawlera I'm not going to demonstrate in this video, maybe some other time. So this one is on GitHub. So this is free. And what it does is actually it's just a middleware. So you install it and make some changes to the settings. So essentially you are enabling the download middlewares and that's it. So what this will do is it will go to some of the free proxy sites where it is going to find some proxies which are available for use and it will just plug into Scrappy project nicely. So this is one option and then this is the paid option Scrapper API. So if you look at the plans, uh, the first plan, basic plan is for $29 and you get 250,000 API calls. So this is on the cheaper side. And then you have Crawlera, which is uh, very professional and it is from the same guys who make Scrapping Hub. And their plan starts at $99 for a 200,000 request. So these are the three main proxy scenarios. So maybe the, you want to start with this one scrappy proxy pool and let's quickly see how we will do it. And the first is the scrappy proxy pool. So first command is to pip install. I have already done it, but if I want to show you, I can run it again and you can see that all the requirements are satisfied. So as you can see I already that it's a good decent set of requirements. Anyway, so the second step is to create a scrappy project. So let's create one scrappy project. So scrappy start project and let's call it proxy and I will create one blank spider and let's call it free and fourth parameter as start URL anything will change it later. In fact, let's generate one more spider and let's call it API and crawler. I am not going to demonstrate in this video, maybe some other time. So let's open this folder in Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to fast forward a bit because I don't want to bore you with the basic structure of the uh, spider. I'm going to use the same spider, but I don't want to bore you with the structure. So I'm just going to hit pause for a moment. So what I've done is I've created a basic structure of the spider. So if I want to zoom in. So as you can see that it's a very simple spider. So instead of using start URLs, I've used this function start request. The reason is that we get a lot more flexibility about if you want to create a dynamic set of requests, then this is a good place to do. So that's why I'm using it. I actually want to show you what happens when we send multiple requests. So I'll probably run a loop here. And then I have copy pasted exactly the same code in a free. So let's run this code once without making any change. So let's run it. So let's go to terminal. Clear everything. So scrappy list should show the two spiders. So let me zoom this and uh, let's run any of the spider. It's uh, basically the same. So scrappy crawl and let's crawl API. And if you remember that I simply printed. So if I'm using a print statement, I actually don't need the log. So I'm going to skip that and I'm just going to set the log level to warnings only. So we'll directly get okay. So, so this was the mistake instead of URL, I passed C URL or curl. So as you can see that uh, this proxy address was printed out and that's all actually this URL does. So it's a very simple URL, uh, which simply returns your IP address. So that's why it is good for this kind of testing. Now, if I want to run it, let's say five times, 
So all we have to do is for i in range 5, a word of caution, if we do it like this, I want to show you one side note. You can see that there was only one request because Scrappy, in, you know, found out. Scrappy actually determined that these scraps are duplicate five times. So it will do auto filtering. So we in, we don't want auto filtering. So what we'll do is we'll set don't filter to true. And let's run it now. And now you can see that the same request was called all the five times. In fact, there is another trick. Most of the website will ignore query string parameters that they don't understand. So maybe we could also do something like, you know, some arbitrary query string parameter and set it to this and then we don't need this. So this will also work. Let's test it. So this again printed five times. So we can go with any of these two. I'm going to copy this exact code in the other spider. Now let's go to the documentation for Scrappy Proxy Pool. So we already installed it. Now we need to make some changes in settings. So proxy pooled enable. So this has to be true. Okay. So let's go to code. Find the settings file. So this is the settings files which was generated. So I'm just going to make things easier. I'm going to delete everything which is commented out. Okay. So these are the required things. So this I'm going to set it to false. It will save me one API call and proxy pool enabled is true. This also I'm going to copy and paste it here. Now let's run the spider. That's all we needed to change actually. So let's run the spider now. So it will go and connect to these websites and it will find out a list of IP addresses which are available. So far we can see proxy daily, we can see SSL proxies, free proxy list and now you can see the messages that proxy has been chosen. So it took some time but yes uh, we have all the five requests completed and here you can see the result. So this was as simple as that. Just enable these two things and all the spiders will use proxy. For now, I'm going to delete these because I want to move on to the next one. So the next one is Scrapper API. So as I showed you that uh, the $29 plan has 250,000 API, but you don't have to directly go for it because you can see this button sign up for free. So I've just moved on to the dashboard and you can see that I signed up for a free account so you can see that this is a free plan and I have uh, 1000 requests. So this is good enough for testing, but any production kind of scenario, you will need at least the $29 plan. So once you sign up to this site, you will get one API key and that API key is what you are going to need. So what I have done is I've created this file config and I've just pasted in that string of API. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to import that file from config import and this is the string which contains my API key. So this is the first thing that you need. Now let's move on and follow the documentation. On the site you have the link to documentation. Here we are on the documentation page. Let's look at the sample code. For, they have different sample codes listed out. And here is the one which is for Python. And this code on the top is to replace a request library scrapper API client. So as you can see that you will need this API key which is going to look something like this. And if you're using Scrappy, they have mentioned clearly that if you're using Scrappy, instead of start URL directly passing the URL, you need to pass instance of client and then call the scrappy get method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these two lines from the documentation, paste in here. And of course, this is also mentioned that you need to do a pip install scrapper SDK. So this actually I have already done. You can actually see that already 
and if you're using start urls you can simply take this line and update but what we are using is start request so we need this line instead of this we'll paste it here like this maybe just this part because we'll be running for more than one so this part looks okay and again this parse this is also not required because if we do not provide a parse method then the default is parse and that is what we have so that's all we needed ah one more thing this api key we just copied from documentation so here we need our api key that the one that we got when we created the account so let's run it and see what happens so scrappy crawl api and this time i'm going to let the log print everything and let's see what we have so as you can see very quickly we are getting the results and so here is the first ip this ip is different this ip is different this is different this is different yeah done now but still it took no time as compared to the free solution that we were using so again scrapper api is good paid service when you want to get started but when you want to get really professional then you should move to something like crawlera let's go and look at the documentation so if you want to use crawlera then what you have to do is you have to set crawlera enable to true and the api key these are the two things that you will need rest of the parameters can be adjusted as you go and this will actually work very nicely if you have a scrapping hub cloud account so i hope you found this tutorial somewhat useful that's all for today see you in the next one